We're doing Messy Church today. Many people do Messy Church all over the world. It came to us from the Anglican Church in Great Britain. It is part of their Fresh Expression program where they really try to reach people who are not used to church and show them the love of Christ in a different way. Messy Church is a gathering where families come to the church to learn about different things in the Bible. And after that, there's crafts downstairs and a dinner. And we like talk about what's kind of happening like right now it's Easter so we talk about how Jesus was risen from the cross. Messy Church is an opportunity for young families to become more involved within the church community. Sometimes Sunday service has gotten real complicated. If you don't know the liturgy you might feel pretty lost at church. This will never happen to you at Messy Church. Messy Church is, does not have any expectations. We explain everything from scratch. And it is really a church for all generations. And also a church for neighbors, because we always combine it with a community meal. And it was an opportunity for me to bring my great nieces and nephews, who had been asking me questions about church, so that they could learn what church was. The, the, the biggest question is, what do we do when we go to church? And then the other question that I got asked, I was working on an applique, and she said, what is the big deal about Jesus? So it's a chance for her to learn what the big deal about Jesus is. Good. Let's start. So what we are planning to do today is tell you a little bit more about Easter, because Easter is such an important Christian holiday. And what we celebrate is that Jesus, who had become a human being and had died as a human being, is also risen again and has entered into eternal life. And because Jesus Christ did that, we can do that as well. So what happens on Palm Sunday is Jesus Christ has been doing a lot of great ministry in the country where he was born into, Palestine. He has healed people, he has taught people, he has performed miracles, and people were very excited about him. And now he's coming to Jerusalem for the high Jewish holidays because Jesus was a Jew. And I brought something for you to celebrate that. Do you know what this is? This is a baguette, a finished baguette. It's called pula, right? And it's a sweet bread. And just as we do Sundays at church, everyone can have a little piece of pula. And when we go downstairs later, you get more of it. But now it's just symbolically so that we together can remember Jesus' last meal with his friends and disciples, OK? As I said, there's going to be more downstairs. This is just a little taste because we're explaining what we're actually doing on church. You want to keep that large piece? Okay, sir. That's fine. Did everybody get it? Very good. They executed people by nailing them on the cross. So that's what happened to him. He was nailed on the cross. And this is really a very, very sad event, which we remember on Good Friday, the Friday before Easter. Do you see what's on the green? A tomb! It's Jesus' tomb, but the tomb is empty. Because what happened was, after Jesus died on the cross, he was buried in the tomb, and the next day his mother and other women from his family and friends came and wanted to do some ritual things with him, like what you do when, when somebody has died. And then he was not there anymore. He had risen. So all of you, you are pastors or priests with me now. Turn around to your congregation, please. Now, when you say, don't do it yet, only when I say you, say you should do it. You can say, Alleluia, he is risen, and throw your Alleluia card high up into the air, okay? And then the congregation will respond with, he is risen indeed, Alleluia. One, two, three, and Alleluia. He is risen. Where are the cards? He is risen indeed. Hallelujah.
and every kid is a different meal, and after the meal, there is crafts, and everyone loves the crafts. Like, I helped a little girl, I think she was like four, and I helped her cut the paper, cut out the stuff, and I helped her glue it on the page. So, a messy church is aimed at children with shorter attention spans. Um, to have a, a young child, especially a young child who has not attended church services, sit through a formal church service with a little bit of standing and sitting, they could potentially, well, they're not going to listen because they don't have the attention span and they can get squirrely and say, I'm not going back. Messy Church has been a great experience so far. It was wonderful to work together with the other churches and the other church leaders, inspiring. We all have like inspired each other with our different approach to church, with our different ideas for the devotions and the crafts and the meals. And it has also really got great response from our local community. So people come to Messy Church, neighbors, people who live in Coppercliff, people who are attached to church, but also people who have never been to church before, and they all really like it. Actually, I, I watched Dylan um, just the last session, and he's sitting there, and he's fascinated. He's just got this look on his face going, What's this all about? And he's really enjoying what's being said. And he sat still, like Dylan's an ants in the pants kids. And he was sitting and really listening. So I think there's a lot of promise in this. I would ask them to come to Messy Church and learn a little bit more about God and eat good food and do some crafts. I always love Messy Church. I see some of my friends there sometimes and the food's always good and sometimes they'll do the crafts. Our goal is to bring the love of Jesus Christ to our local community and what comes out of that, what the people do with it, that is really absolutely up to them and the Holy Spirit.